Alright guys, this is Nick from RC Mojo. Today we're looking at adding lights to an RC. Or more accurately, looking at the electronics, as I'm sure you can figure out how to glue an LED to a body shell. Having said that, we might put a video together at a later date with some tips and tricks. There are quite a few kits around varying in price from expensive to ludicrously expensive. So in this video, and no doubt the follow-ups, we will show you the fundamentals for a basic setup that doesn't cost too much to put together. This D90 has a full set of lights which are controlled by a small processor. As this series progresses, we will work our way up to a system like this. But we need to start at the beginning with a simple lights on off setup. There are a few components we need for this, the first being LEDs, or light emitting diodes. These are not light bulbs. They are a semiconductor, cased in resin, and as such need to be treated right if they are to last. LEDs are available in lots of different shapes and sizes. You may be familiar with the common 5 and 3mm leaded type, which is what we will be using here as quite a few RC bodies now come ready for them to be fitted. The next component are the resistors. These are used to limit the current to the LEDs. Without them there is nothing but the resistance in the wires to limit the current, resulting in a damaged or dead LED. Like the LEDs, they come in various shapes and sizes, but we will be using the common leaded axial metal film type. To connect everything, you'll need some wire. The size or gauge doesn't matter too much, so fairly thin wire will do the job nicely. The last bit is a switch. Not strictly necessary, but it will let you turn the lights off when you don't need them. Pretty much any small switch will do the job. We're using a cheap on-off rocker. As for tools, you'll need a soldering iron, solder, and some cutters. It would also be good to have some heat shrink available. Before you go out and buy parts, we need to work out the specs. First, the LED. The white LED I have here is 18,000 millicandela, which for a headlight is about as low as you want to go. For the rear lights, 10,000 millicandela is plenty. Forward current, or IF, is 30 milliamps. Forward voltage, or VF, is 3.2 volts. Color is white, and the package is a 5 mm radial. The next bit is where most people get a bit confused, but it's not too bad, honestly. First we have the Ohm's Law bit. Voltage, volts, current, amps, resistance, ohms. And in this case, VBAT, which is the battery or supply voltage. The calculation is very simple. VBAT minus forward voltage divided by the forward current equals resistance. Simples. The 6L battery commonly used in RC has a nominal voltage of 7.2 volts but their peak is 9 volts, so to be safe we use 9 volts as VBAT. If we now use the numbers in the specs, remembering there's 1000 milliamps in an amp, we get 9 minus 3.2 divided by 0 0.03, which is 193.3. Round that up to the next preferred value and we get 220 ohms. The other spec we need is the wattage. For that, all we need to do is multiply VBAT by the forward current. So, 9 times 0 0.03, which equals 0 0.27, which is just over a quarter of a watt, so you need to go up to half a watt to be safe. After all that, we end up with a metal film, 220 ohm, half watt resistor. That wasn't so bad, was it? Wiring an LED is simple. First, an LED is polarised. The long leg, anode, goes to the positive end, and the short leg, cathode, goes to the negative end. The cathode is also identified on many LEDs with a flat spot on the skirt. The resistor, which is not polarised, needs to go between the battery and the LED, it doesn't matter which side. And, like the resistor, the switch can go either side of the LED, but it's preferred to put it on the positive side. The basic circuit goes from positive, through the switch, then the resistor, the LED, and lastly to negative. Now, one LED isn't very useful, so to add more, we connect them up like this. When the switch is closed, the LEDs will light. It's also worth noting, it doesn't matter where the resistor LED combo goes, as long as it's connected correctly to the supply, meaning this layout will have the same effect. If we follow the path for one LED, you can see each LED is connected to the supply the same way. Positive, switch, resistor, LED, and negative. The next bit is arguably the most fun, because we get to play with a soldering iron. First we need to prep the wire runs. Using the cutters, snip the lengths you need, 
then strip 3 or 4 millimeters of insulation off the end. I tend to use a knife and roll the wire, but you can use the cutters instead. Another quick tip, when you have several LEDs on one wire, you can strip the insulation midway. Roll the wire under a knife at the ends of the bit you want to strip, then cut the insulation and peel it away. It takes some practice, but it's a handy technique to have. Next, we tin all the bits we're going to be soldering. All tinning is, is coating the parts with solder. A blob of sticky tack is very handy here to hold things in place. While tinning the LEDs, I've also fitted the resistor. Cut the long leg on the LED down to 5mm or so, and cut one leg on the resistor also down to 5mm. Now tin the ends of the legs and position the parts for soldering. You might want some tweezers or something to hold the resistor as it will heat up. Then with some fresh solder on the iron, heat the two parts at the same time. You should be left with a nice glossy joint. The other joints all done the same way. Don't hold the iron on too long after the solder melts or the solder won't flow properly and you'll be left with a bad joint. If you follow the wires, you can see it's exactly the same as the diagrams. Positive, switch, resistor, LED and negative. The only other thing you'll need to consider is insulation for the bare joints. Heat shrink is ideal for this. Now, as they say, let there be light. Right, well, with any luck you'll have a fancy, homemade RC light system ready to go in no time. Stay tuned to RC Mojo for more advanced tutorials. Oh, and don't forget to have a look at rcmojo.com for even more cool stuff.